Hey, good morning. It's Patrick Lovell, truth bombing on uh, May 2nd at uh, 2023 at 8.30 a.m. my time. And I'm at my wit's end, my friends. I, um, you know, I got to be real. Um, this is, this is really brutal. Um, this is like, this is like nothing I've ever experienced in my life. Um, the challenge of trying to find the enthusiasm and the, um, I guess the fortitude, quite frankly, to carry on considering what I've done for the last year and a half is a significant struggle. I mean, I got to tell you, I, I wake up in the mornings and I have this sensibility where um, I feel like I'm in a, that scene from Star Wars where Han Solo and Chewbacca and Leia and, uh, and uh, Luke <clears throat> were being, the walls were closing in, you know, on the trash compactor. And then there was this like giant monster worm that was trying to um, kill them as well. And they had to try to escape and find a way through. And uh, they did, of course. And that's the movies, right? <clears throat> For me, in this situation, what I've tried to do over and over and over is extrapolate and infuse sort of the goings on of the daily echo chamber and then tie it to what it is that I've spent years aggregating and millions of dollars aggregating and um, to try to reveal to you the emperor's where the emperor wears no clothes and it's infuriating it's infuriating because there's so much trickery there's so much quackery there's so much and and I wonder if this has been sort of the thing throughout American history, particularly. I mean, I, we've had a an incredible history of snake oil salesmen, and we tend to be drawn to people that are charismatic, that have something that gain our attention, that somehow get a toehold and then build something and become a story unto themselves. And that's pretty much American history. Everything from um, you know the Horatio Alger stories to somebody like you know Barnum and Bailey that there's a sucker born every minute. And I grew up believing in the American dream. I believe in, I grew up believing in, in integrity that you have goals, you have, uh, you know, sort of mile markers of achievements. You work really hard to achieve those goals. You become the best you can be at whatever your function is. And in society, a lot of people become professionals. They might be doctors of some sort. They might be accountants, attorneys, you know, um, or, or successful business people. There's a lot of pathways to become what we are. And all of that are just stepping stones, right? You have to have education. You have to get to the next level and the next level. And you have to have sort of a vision and a pathway. And then hopefully you get some breaks along the way. I'm 54 years old and I've been around the block. I've been around this country a lot of times. And I've always been aware of things about you know, whatever period in history that I'm, I'm living in, aware of, you know, what's going on, because I've always been active, especially politically active. And, uh, <clears throat> and um, there's always been a centerpiece, the, the, the or the, the sales, all of those things work in unison, to be able to create the whole and the nexus of who you are. And as I've explained millions of times, I'm a muckraker journalist. I'm a producer. I put together a five-part docu-series in addition to many other things I've done in my career. But this one in particular is important to what these truth bombs and these riffs and this effort is trying to achieve. And about six weeks ago, and again, I'll mention it, www.thecon.tv. And that body of work is the revelation of the largest criminal conspiracy and cover-up in history. And it never ended. And the strange oddity about this sort of struggle between the immediacy of technology, the ability to get messaging out there, ultimately is competing with so much that garnishes our attention. I'm like everybody else. I've said that a million times before as well. It's easy to get caught up on my TikTok feed and seeing cool people do great things 
that I enjoy incredible rock musicians throughout my history because once the algorithm understood my feet, it understands what understands what I'm interested in and it gives it to me. And so I see rock and rollers myself, extreme athletes. I see, you know, animals and extraordinary things typically. And, you know, I literally have to set my timer when I step into TikTok because if I don't set it for five minutes, <clears throat> 15, 20 minutes later, I'm still looking at these feeds that have just completely ga- garnished my attention. Meanwhile, in the space of the sort of outrageous ecosphere and the continuation of the identity politics wars and the culture wars, all of those scenarios in many ways are extremely important, but it takes up so much bandwidth and everyone is so reactionary that it's hard to understand who is in control and for what purpose. Now, I used to think that, look, there's a lot of different sort of scenarios. There's a lot of different storylines, but the system itself is designed to be a separation of powers in which Congress operates a certain way. The Supreme Court and the judiciary operate a a, a certain way. The presidency, the executive branch and everything under there operates a, a certain way. And so does media. Right. And that confluence of all of those things give us, the citizenry, a window into what's happening such that we can keep our fingers on the pulse of those in control of piloting or captaining the, let's call it the USS aircraft, um, you know, uh, enterprise that we're all on, right? And you've got to have faith in the systems, just like you have to have faith in your currency. That's really promulgated. Um, everything that happens is a faith that the money that we use is going to be good tomorrow in any circumstance to purchase or borrow or whatever that we consume so that it's a measure of trade and value of currency that everybody depend on to, to, to value how you're moving through this, this river we call life. And so, again, my frustration is about six weeks ago, I decided, look, I'm going to give this one last swing. And I created a vision that makes absolute sense, given what the circumstances are. And what I have intended to do, and what I've laid out as my objective, is to create a tidal wave populist crusade to purge corruption. Now, the only way you can do that is if you understand corruption. What happens in American society is that there's so much corruption and there's so many different variables and a lot of it kind of comes through like comic book, television, detective series type scenarios where an insider might get a payoff to cover something up that somebody got, you know, an injustice uh, scenario, maybe a murder of some, some sort. And, you know, that's kind of the deal. And you've got to depend on the system to be able to flush that out. And we know, looking back in recent history, particularly in two massive movements. One was the Black Lives Matter, and that all formulated around the murder of George Floyd. But of course, it was the murder of like, what, maybe 20, 30 unarmed African-Americans over the course of the previous three years that people finally came to the streets and said, this is insane. Enough's enough. And it turned into a massive riots and it creates a life of its own. But there was a catalyst for it. And that catalyst was injustice. And that catalyst was this reflection of society looking at the system saying, we can't have white police officers have a license to murder unarmed black, typically African-American men. That's not to say that every once in a while, a white person will stumble into the uh, situation where they got shot, um, you know, in a, in, a, in, a, in a peculiar way and that sort of thing. It happens, right? But we were talking about systemic predation, racism, and uh, the prison industrial complex <clears throat> that the... Um, Black Lives Matter movement pushed back against. Same thing with Me Too, right? Me Too is in, incredible because um, there has been systemic rape and, you know, uh, predation um, in offices and in professional scenarios and different throughout probably history, but particularly recent history. And it was incredibly inspiring to see when Donald Trump got elected president, this sort of outpouring of emotions from women, females around the country, like, oh my God, he, he's an amalgamation. He's like the face of everything that took place. And so therefore people were like, 
oh my God. And there was this catalyst and there was this movement. But then in both cases, in always, there's this sort of like secondary wave of kind of a response that turned into what we're now talking about. Um, well, it started with censorship. And I'm trying to think of the term. It was cancel culture, right? And then now we're into the next phase of this, which is censorship. Now, the, the, the censorship industrial machine is very real. I've read recent reports stemming from Matt Taibbi's um, uh, Twitter files that there's this incredible machine. And, and of course, you can imagine it because everything that we're talking about and everything that I'm battling against and everything that holds our attention or dissuades us or distracts us and all of these different variables, it typically is, is managed through algorithms. And so we know that there's a systemology of tech wizards that are thinking in terms of psychology because there's so much money to be made out there from our behavior. And when we're not paying for something, we're the product. So what does that have to do with why I'm frustrated and why I'm you know, at my wit's end and why um, I'm waking up feeling like uh, the walls are caving in? And what's that have to do with this movement, this ongoing movement that I'm trying to, 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 to trigger. Well, it's because in my work, as I've said, I discovered and realized and show improved the largest criminal conspiracy and cover up in history that never ended. That is our system. And we were canceled. We were canceled in every which way imaginable. But when you get canceled by the Borg, it makes it that much more easy for people to ignore it because they're like, well, look, I'm not seeing this guy from the New York Times. I'm not seeing this guy in Rachel Maddow. I'm not seeing this guy in Tucker Carlson. I'm not seeing this guy in Joe Rogan. I'm not seeing this guy on Russell Brand. They've already got their audiences. And they've already, and they all have their model of what to do and why they do it and what they react to. And it's almost literally like this by the numbers sort of thing that you've got to do, just like writing a script. Seriously, if you write a murder mystery script, there are beats that you've got to hit that are deemed sort of from gatekeepers in the in the television and the film industry that you've got to hit this beat and in this sequence by this time because there's a formula that works that we all like to watch. And if you put this celebrity and this guy in this space and you have this music um, you know conductor and this director of photography, the formula works, and so therefore we're going to make money. Okay, that's basically in a nutshell how all of these platforms work, whether it's mainstream media or whether it's independent media. Now, in the case of someone like Rachel Maddow, she's got incredible resources. She pulls in whatever millions once per week because now she's the $30 million woman that can tell her story once a week and back off of her five-day-a-week appearance that probably took its toll on her, and maybe her conscience got to her at some point because she had been cherry-picking the entire time everything to do with the Trump presidency or Trump antics or Trump buffoonery and everything else, and that held sway for a long time because the guy was the president and he's got a lot of power and influence and a lot of what the country does is based on what happens out of the executive branch. And, you know, ultimately by doing that, she couldn't see the forest for the trees either. And with all of those incredible resources and with all of those great minds and herself included, she couldn't in a million years unpack what it is that I've done. Tucker Carlson, the same infinitum. You know, there's a lot of hand wringing from different personalities and opinion based people right now that have spent a lot of time justifying Trump's uh, Trump Tucker's antics and in, in, in apologizing for certain things because because he was critical of the, you know, the, the, ph the pharmaceutical industry and he was critical of the war in Ukraine. OK, sorry, there's a lot more to the picture than both of those scenarios. And I dare say both of those scenarios are tied to what it is that I'm revealing to you. And it can go on and on and on. I could tell you about the New York Times. Listen, I have worked with people that have been editors with the New York Times for decades. And I know what the New York Times does and doesn't do. And I've got a pretty goddamn under good understanding of why and who makes those decisions. But that's a dialogue for another time. And then, um, you know, that goes for all of mainstream media, really. And um, they have completely failed. Not uh, how do I want to phrase this? They have completely failed to reveal what it is that I'm telling you because, again, everybody's in on it. Okay, so Patrick, get to the point, please. You've got me, you know, maybe hooked for like, I mean, how many minutes now? I'm up to 14 minutes, right? <laughs> Why am I my wit's end? 
Well, because I tried to create a um, people-funded movement to break this machine, to break the algos, to break everything, to join me because I've got to do a capital raise. And the only way this is going to make sense is if the people buy in because there's millions of victims and tens of millions of victims of corruption. And most of them don't know how it works. But just the people that were victims of the 2008 financial crisis that never ended is literally in the tens of millions. It's not just people who lost their homes to foreclosure, although that's a lot of them. There's people that lost their pensions and never recovered. And that's all tied to the same thing. And it all had a face. It all had a methodology. I love to watch Perry Mason on HBO. I, I, I kind of knew the Perry Mason show from the 50s, but the Perry Mason show on, um, on HBO is magnificent. And if you watch that show, you'll understand that he basically unravels crime mysteries to get to the, get to the truth, which typically is obfuscated by some form of corruption. Yeah, it's brilliant and inspires me. The writers are fantastic. They get it. Same with other shows. I mean, some of my favorite, all of my favorites, they all have similar themes, whether it's Game of Thrones, whether it's Peaky Blinders, whether it's Breaking Bad, um, and quite frankly, stranger things to a degree, but there are always this sort of juxtaposition in these stories of good versus evil and evil usually acts with this diabolical intent that have some sort of complicity, some sort of obfuscation and some sort of reasoning and rationale. And usually the reason why they do it is because of some sort of construction of power or theft to hide something up. And, you know, we've seen it all since we're kids. In my generation, I grew up with Scooby-Doo, right? That was one side of, uh, you know, a, 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 we're all fascinated by stories of people finding out when wrongdoers are doing wrong and they get out. It. That's part of the American process. It's the process of justice. But what I have found is not only was the system that created tens of millions of illegal mortgages, based on all sorts of deceptive acts and practices that are on display at the con www.thecon.tv and then we did another fantastic podcast called the uh, real um, the new untouchables on the real progressives and then I've done so much more I've done literally thousands of hours worth of content on all this stuff right and it still hasn't penetrated I mean I've got seven and a half million views on TikTok and I've got 538 likes on on YouTube there's different sort of, you know, manifestations of how you do what, when, and how, and, you know, and, 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 and how you get eyeballs and the algorithms are written to be able to do certain things. But I've got to find a miracle or give up because six weeks ago I put into my head, look, man, if I could get 1300 people that want to understand and end this rotting corruption that controls everything. And I, and I've laid this out so many times. If you want to fix the problem with systemic racism in, prison, in the prison industrial complex, the only way you can do that is to purge corruption. If you want to get rid of all of the society's sort of injustices that are based on um, systemic scenarios, you have to get rid of corruption. The most important of which, above all else, is our financial system. Our financial system is insane. It's literally, by definition, a crime syndicate, okay? It's the mob. That's all there is to it. And there's ways that it works. And we show you in the con at www.thecon.tv exactly how it works. Why would you listen to me if none of these other people have told you? Well, so far, we've already been seen by several million people. We need to be seen by 20, 30, 40, 50 million people. Is that to put a lot of money in my pocket? You know, to be honest with you, based on the business model and what I've got going on, and I don't have a relationship with my partner that I built this with anymore, I, I don't know if I'd ever see a dime from it, to be honest with you. But I want millions of people to see it because it gives you the working understanding of exactly how all of this works. Now, in addition to that, I've got hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage on the sidelines plus tens of thousands of hours, sorry, of documents that prove the next phase of what I'm going to tell you. That tens of millions of people were not only set up in a global racketeering enterprise that destroyed the global economy, but the worst part of it is twofold. And this is the biggest revelation that you will ever hear. Nobody's going to tell you this. Nobody's going to tell you this in mainstream. I'll give you an example last week in mainstream. There was a mention of some of the uh, bank runs, okay, brief. And then there's a mention in certain pockets 
of the riots in Paris. Nobody's connecting two and two together that central banks have created a financial terrorism that is destroying the world. And those two stories are really connected. And it's now. But yet people don't understand how the system works. And so what I'm telling you, and you're not going to hear anywhere, and I'm trying to get this out there in a big way. And there's people that I'm working with that will hopefully help me get it out there in a way that has never happened before. But there's a lot of good, there's a lot of luck that's going to have to be involved too. I mean, my God, the, 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 the amount of time and hours that I put into this thing and the millions of dollars to get this is one thing. And to get it out there and above the noise when the, the system itself is so corrupt and it owns everything. And I'll start with BlackRock. So BlackRock was that juxtaposition, quite frankly, not so much on the bank runs recently, even though I wouldn't be surprised if they were involved in a lot of ways with the VCs and some things that were happening at Silicon Valley Bank. And I wouldn't be surprised at New Republic Bank. But that wasn't the main genesis of what you know created that problem. That's all related to the Fed. That's all related to all sorts of different interest rate variables and, 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 and just mismanagement and stupidity. And then control fraud is the most important one, which, again, we show you on the con. But then the, the next phase of that is that we have – the judiciary has plowed millions of people into poverty and foreclosure that dest destroyed thousands of marriages, tens of thousands, who knows how many, and same with suicide, same with people that are in the streets. And it's just literally financial terrorism. That's what this is. You need to understand it's a criminal syndicate. The way I describe our, our system, democracy is dead. We don't have democracy, okay? The law is not equal. The law plays for the money. And so the system is in the law, and that goes all the way to the top. I'm telling you, all of the institutions that are supposed to be separate but equal in the branches of government, the way they are designed, based on our founders understanding corruption, that's how this whole thing has worked throughout history. They've all conglomerated under the big money that owns the whole system. And so what you have is twofold. You have a corporate fascist system undergirded by a criminal syndicate that uses socialism to guarantee the mafiocracy and all of these schemes that I've, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you about that then creates fascism. None of that is democracy. And none of that would happen if our institutions that have a budget of over $90 billion a year did what I did. And the media, who knows how much billions their budgets are collectively, you know, revealed what I'm telling you. And that this truth got to millions of people that need to see it so that we could galvanize and hold power to account, which is what this movement is about. But yet, over the course of six weeks, I think we had 30 investors, as I call it, and we raised 1500 bucks. I can promise you, as great as that is and how thankful I am for people who've already done that, that's not going to move the needle. To get on first base, we need 1300 people to invest, $13. If you do that and you bring 13 people um, uh, to the table and they do the same thing, each person who, who achieves that number, you, don't, you, you invest 13 and you bring 13 people to the table, you'll, um, you'll get a T-shirt that has one of our incredible hashtags that encapsulate this whole thing, bumper sticker, maybe a sign, whatever we can do. But we got to raise the funds first. got to get on first base. i got to be able to do the, um, uh, you know, the, the proper structure for um, an organization to be able to do this so that then I can get people in the fold to help building the circle and build out and build out and build out. And the first thing we're going to do is we'll create a real podcast that I can, I just talked to a buddy of mine. He's a former Marine intelligence guy who's serving in Fallujah. He knows how to figure this stuff out. He told me about the whole system of systemology of algorithms on YouTube to where, you know, we could drive the numbers probably concurrent to the people that need to hear it, but just based on the algorithms and how they work. So I've got a, a bigger understanding a better understanding of how that whole thing works and that's part of it but what i really really am trying to do is i'm trying to quiet the noise around us and get your attention to understand how everything that i've told you up to this point led to our central bank the federal reserve of the united states backdooring because it was illegal tens of trillions of dollars to the corrupt financial system who got there based on massive criminality and in 2009, we spent $29 trillion to, main, to stabilize the system for the people that blew it up. And then we spent trillions and trillions of more on a thing called quantitative easing. It's a monetary policy apparatus that is supposed to create short-term, I mean, uh, uh, low interest rates for long-term to stimulate the economy. But ultimately, they were doing stock buyback programs. And I'm, I'm sorry, 
mortgage uh, asset back uh, programs. So what we did effectively was we gave trillions of dollars to the richest in the world because a lot of different of these multinationals are connected with different apparatuses uh, around the world. We gave them trillions of dollars to a tiny percentage of the population to make the facade look like the economy was still growing, which we created another facade in the in the stock market, you know, because people were into everything from, you know, meme stocks to, you know, crypto and all of the other sorts of um, get, you know, get rich quick schemes, that sort of thing. And they always blow up, but they're all predicated on criminality. And that's all enabled by deregulation. Okay. And that's part and parcel to what we teach you in the con. And so if I was able to get on first base and we get organized and we build a podcast, then we continue to deliver this information. I have access to all of the experts and the people that could turn the tables on the corruption if we could elevate their voices above the madness of lies. You're not going to see these people on Rachel Maddow. You're not going to see the good guys on any of the bloviating ecosphere reactionary circus people because they're into what's happening now because of trending as opposed to understanding the big picture. And I'll, I'll use um, Russell Brand as a, as a rough, as a, as a, um, as, as kind of the personification of this, you know, Russell Brand is in, in, in search of answers. He wants to create his so-called great awakening, but he doesn't have the time to understand what's real. And his gatekeepers have shunned me. And I don't know why that is. I'm assuming it is because you've got to have, um, you know, sort of cachet or carte blanche with, with his team, or you have to already have millions of people seeing you. There's, it's a monetary equation. He's not looking for the truth. He's looking for people that can speak to things that he can extrapolate and interpret to interpret, you know, that build sort of algorithms that everybody is, you know, feeding. And so, for example, I just happened to watch him and Sagar and Genty this morning. And trust me, they're not on the same page. They're not even remotely the same people, but they do kind of reach an independent audience online. And when they talk together about things like, you know, uh, and the, the whole purpose of the conversation was to talk about Tucker Carlson. And yeah, that's that's kind of trending. So they do that to feed their algorithms because that's part of the U2 scenario to generate eyeballs. Contrast that with what I'm telling you. He's looking to he he loosely understands the corruption of the system and he has a good sense of it because he's got great instinct. And I'm talking about Russell Brand here, not Sagar, because he doesn't. But he does on UFOs, which I think is kind of funny. But the long and the short of it is that um, we we. A guy like Russell Brand's not going to bring you the truth, and he hasn't. And I don't know why we haven't penetrated him. In the old days, it would have been easy. But now, it's because everything is basically manipulated by algorithms, and everybody's got to fit in the tech thing. And, it's a, and it makes sense that Russell does what he does. He replaced his addiction to drugs with his addiction to this. And it's easy to see how he fiends to get the numbers going. And I, I'm sorry to, to try to – I don't know if that discredits him because I think he's really a genius in so many ways – but how does that, again, have anything to do with why I'm at my wit's end and why I'm thinking about this is, you know, uh, the end of the road or is it the beginning? Because if I leave this space and I don't deliver what it is that I have to the millions of people that need to see it, it's dead to history and the corruption wins and they will be relentless as they have been for the last really 40 years, but the last 13 years on overdrive, it's a technique. It's a smash and grab. It's internalization. And it's like, you know, I mentioned this the other day. I wish I could be a pig fucking, um, you know, financial trader that just loots the world and, and pensions and people because I can and nobody's going to stop me. And I can make trillions of dollars or billions of dollars on the upside and nobody's going to stop me. And I can buy the whole system and nobody's going to stop me. And it creates this perversion out there that's insane. I've witnessed in the last week alone, I have seen female attorneys involved with this crazy, um, uh, you know, bar case with this defense attorney by the name of Bruce Jacobs down in Miami, who has presented unbelievable evidence of systemic um, uh, deception and perjury in the courts by the system, the people that are supposed to be able to have integrity or excuse me, uh, credibility in the courts. And you've got these law firms and you've got these servicers that are all involved with collecting debts on properties that they don't own. And then they make up the paperwork and they do it and they've done it for millions of cases and nobody ever stopped them. 
We had a situation called the National Mortgage Settlement, and nobody ever stopped them. And they're women that are doing this. And so you have women who, who, who get into positions of, I guess, power that are on the backs of other sacrifices of other women for all the right reasons, and they come in and they work for the board. They work for the machine. Same with black guys. Same with Jews. Same with whomever. It doesn't matter. The Borg is the Borg. The Borg is corruption. The Borg has got to be destroyed. The way you destroy the Borg is in the tumor of corruption is with the light of truth. That's the chemo of truth. It's everything that I have. And I've got the, it's the $29 trillion truth that is now the $70 trillion truth that has never stopped because it's the same story that's on display with these bank runs right now and whatever comes next and the debt ceiling and all the rest of it, it's all tied to the same thing. And so we all get caught up in these culture wars. And then you've got these situations where, you know, it's like, God damn, man, people believe that the Republicans, some people will say that they're the party of law and order. Well, they support a guy like Trump who's been breaking the law tens of thousands of different ways and they're okay with that. And then they're the, 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 um, the party, the right to life party, right? Really? You know, uh, because of the abortion scenario. But then they, I just saw something last night that's like, they've got a, an initiative and it's absolutely horrendous. Kill the gays. That's a legislation that's real. Okay, yeah, you're right to life. Not only that, you know, then no regulation on military grade assault weaponry to, to murder children. Guys, we're a failed state. And the Democrats, I mean, anybody who buys in the fact that we have a democracy, that this is a democracy, and that the law is supreme, that's just as ridiculous. Maybe more so, because usually those people tend to be educated, but they buy into the system. We're a complete train wreck of disaster. If you believe that we're going to get, you know, um, all sorts of like um, massive maneuverings to make our, uh, our, our, our energy um, uh, consumption sustainable, no, we're not until we purge corruption. I mean, there are some great headways on terms of electric vehicles and everything else, but look, it's just this huge balance and BlackRock's like, okay, well, how do we have our cake and it eat it too? And they own the world and nobody elected BlackRock and they got there through their own criminality as well. It's the mob. Anyway, I guess it's complicated. I never thought it was complicated. It really isn't. I have all of these answers. I need millions of you to come join me. And I know millions of you would have supported the civil rights efforts during the Martin Luther King era. I know that millions of you would have been on the good guy's side to defeat the Confederacy. I know that millions of you would have been on the good side, guy's side to defeat fascism. Millions of you would have been on the good guy's side to defeat King, King George III and, and the Confederate, I mean, excuse me, the Redcoats and the, and the East India Trading Company and that, that version of tyranny. This whole thing is if you meet in uh, everyone you see who isn't a Nazi, who believes in sustainability, and um, dignity, integrity, and decency, and dignity, you know, come together in unity that will defeat tyranny, and that's our destiny. It's the right thing, guys. Why isn't penetrating? Why isn't, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to do many of these truth bombs as much, because I think I'm laying it all out here, and let's see how long I went. Let's see. 33. Okay, I got to be done with this. I got to wrap it up. Why? I barely scratched the surface, and you've got like an eight-minute bandwidth tops. At least that's what the algorithms say. Look, I don't know, man. The only way this is going to happen is if you like and subscribe and you share and you invest $13 and you get 13 people to join us and then we get a Zoom call with all the original 1,300 people and then we build a movement and then if we can get to that, I know we can get to the 13 million that I think that if we got to 13 million and built a $169 million war trust by we the people, that we the people will rip control back from a government of by and for the corruption. It's the fight of our times. It's it, it, Failure is not an option. Rise, roar, revolt. You've got to go with me so that we can get to the pinnacle because mankind is one of those situations where it's like it could go either way. We're all flawed. We all have a dark side. We all have a good side. You feed, you are what you feed. I am trying to get you to understand that the integrity of the system matters above all else. And we have to to purge corruption. And if you have spent the last 40 years supporting, let's say, the Democrats, they made this happen in a big way. It was the connection between the meritocratists, Democrats, and Wall Street that made this happen. Utter betrayal because of greed and in search of endless freaking yield that didn't exist when you killed the golden goose. So there's that. There's so many things that we have to clean up with the system. Is this a political campaign? Yes. Is it an educational campaign? 
Yes. Is it potentially a presidential campaign? Yes. If only we could create a party. And we could do that if we got $169 million in the war chest. And if we got there, we could get more. I'm a very ambitious guy, but I have not been able to penetrate your conscience. I have not been able to penetrate your soul. I have not been able to activate you to stand up and, and be heard and fight for your own liberty and justice. Everybody's sitting on the sidelines. Most of the older people, if they've got their money and their 401ks and they've got their retirement figured out, they're like, look, man, it's somebody else's fight. I did what I had to do. You know, if my portfolio and my real estate's up and my assets are up, hey, if they did it illegally, at least I benefited from it. And I got to look to my grandchildren. Yeah, really? You're just letting the fucking world fall on their heads. I'm sorry. And then the younger generation, it's like, okay, well, you want to change things? If you want to change gun rights, you want to make the world sustainable, you want to make this world something that we can all benefit from and create this dynamic, absolutely incredible society of which I've experienced many times in my life, I'll tell you that. But it's been really non-existent for the last 13 years because of the corruption. And it's been on this, this pathway for the last 20 years. So, yeah, you know what? I've disassociated myself with the outcome of this because I know that it's going to fall on deaf ears. That's been, you know, everything that's happened so far. But I'll hope with a minute hope that somehow this catches fire and that people start cross-referencing who I am and start seeing my material. And then all of a sudden the Eureka bulb goes off and it's like, oh, my God, this dude's the only guy that's telling us the truth of how the system works. He's got all of the evidence. He's all got all the context of the right people that can turn this upside down. And everybody else is lying to us. Everybody is pissing on our head, telling us it rain that's in power. Because A, they, the greatest trick the devil ever played was to convince the world he didn't exist. And then B, you know, they piss on our head telling us it's rain because they know that we're not going to fucking stop them. Because we haven't. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is if millions of us come together. The story that I've revealed impacts tens of millions of people. If I could get, I, thir let me tell you, 13 million is a small percentage. I know what the percentage is of something, you know, of a hundred and, well, you know, let's just say it was 130 million victims worldwide. So 10%, right? So it's, yeah. Bottom line is it's a small, it's a small segment of the population that's going to have to rise up and save the world, quite frankly. And, and to put things into perspective, it's a small segment percentage of the population that has all the control. Jesus Christ, man. It's history. It's just our turn to step up. Hey, you know where to find me if you want to join me, and we'll see what happens next. Onwards.